Afternoon guys, hope everyone's doing well today. It's a beautiful day out here in Colorado, uh, hanging out in the backyard for this live stream. Uh, was out at Breckenridge today snowboarding with Ryan Napton, trying out the Never Summer Instigator, one of their uh, wider, more unique boards on the Shaper series. So that was a lot of fun. Got some fresh snow as well, which we desperately have been needing in Colorado. So starting to get a little better coverage, but the, the trees are still not really available. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for being here. I already see a bunch of comments coming through. Um, with the live stream every week, just trying to answer as many questions as I can for you guys. So if you have any snowboard questions, any gear questions, anything related to snowboarding, hit me up. I'm going to get to as many questions as I can in the live stream today. going to keep this going for about an hour. Uh, about halfway through around the 30 minute mark, I may stop for a little bit and I'm going to talk about Burton bindings. But other than that, just going to be hanging out with you guys and trying to answer as many questions as I can. If you want to help to support the channel, please make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. It'll let you know anytime a video goes up or anytime that we go live. Also, this is a super chat, so if you have any questions that you really need to get answered, you can make a small donation to help support the channel as well, and that'll highlight your question and make sure that it gets answered. So thank you guys again for being here. I want to give a huge shout out to Kevin and Snowboard Pro Camp for hitting 50 million views. Huge milestone on the channel. So glad I could be a part of it, and I'm really glad that you guys are a part of it as well. We got a lot of great stuff coming up. Uh, just got back from an awesome trip to California with Kevin and the Sport RX crew. I'm actually wearing my uh, Sport RX beanie right now. Great time snowboarding at Mammoth. Had a nice mix of weather. Got a little bit of the stormy, wet, snowy weather. Got a nice sunny pow day and then got some sunny park laps as well. We're able to try the Burton Step On. I hope you guys have checked out that video. Got a few reviews up and just had a great time with it. Stayed in Reno for part of the trip, so that was really interesting. And now I had a little bit of time here in Colorado. I'm actually leaving tomorrow uh, to head up to Vancouver. Gonna meet up with Kevin, and then we are leaving on Wednesday for a European snowboard trip with the In Motion SLB guys. I think I saw them on the chat here today. Super stoked to get out there with you guys and get some snowboarding in. Just the trip itself is gonna be super awesome, and snowboarding is just gonna be a bonus. So really excited to get that going in a couple of days. Uh, as far as what I'm doing, uh, I'm gonna have that review on the Never Summer Instigator coming to the channel very soon, probably in the next couple of days. And catching up on some vlogs, I'm actually starting to put some content up on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash board archive if you wanna check that out. Uh, just gonna take care of a couple of edits that I haven't really had time to get to yet. And then starting on this Europe trip, gonna really start trying to be really active with the videos on my channel as well. So getting those board reviews up on Snowboard Pro Camp, working with Kevin for the videos and trying to kind of document a little bit of behind the scenes on my channel as well. So if you guys want to check that out, I'd be super stoked. Also, right after this live stream, I'm going to hop over to Patreon, patreon.com forward slash board archive and continue a 30 minute live stream over there. Just kind of hanging out a little more casual, uh, less people, a little bit more of a direct conversation going on there. So hopefully I will see some of you guys over there. Uh, but I have seen a ton of comments come through already. So excited to see what your questions are today, guys. Gonna scroll all the way to the top and just kind of see what you guys have been leaving me so far. If you guys want to let us know where in the world you're joining us from, the community here on Snowboard Pro Camp, super awesome, worldwide community. It's always interesting to see where you guys are from. So if you want to drop that as you're commenting as well, that'd be really cool for myself and for everyone else to be able to see. So first question at the top, I'm seeing it looks like we've already gotten loads of questions, guys. Thank you for all the questions. Uh, Leonardo Smolsik, do you use forward lean? Personally, I don't. Uh, if you guys don't know what that is, basically bindings have an adjustment to where the high back leans forward and it makes your heel edge more responsive. Um, I do a lot of park riding, doing a lot of freestyle stuff, so I typically leave mine at zero, but maybe on a carving day, I might put it forward a little bit, but typically I don't. Cannonball 180, J4 Green, what's up guys? Arky, Emilian Popov, regular here on the streams. Good to see you, man. Bruss Sweet, what's up, dude? Good to see you. 
Uh, let's see, Philip NL with the K2 snowboard. K2 is a good brand. It's okay, man. Don't be don't be hard on K2. They got some fun stuff. I got the K287 actually is my personal board this year. Going to be bringing it on the Euro trip, so that's going to be kind of my powder free ride board on that trip. Hoping to do some board reviews as well. See what I can get my hands on. Sam MC with the K2 Payback. Awesome, showing K2 some love. All right, uh, Muhammad Short Sharaka. I'm a beginner rider trying to find a board for myself. I'm a size 11, uh, size 11 boot, six foot two inches, and weigh 240 pounds. Should I go 158 wide or 162 wide, and why? So I would say that depends on the snowboard, uh, depending on the the flex and some other things like that. But at 6'2", 240, I would probably say the 162 wide is going to be the way that you want to go. I would check the weight scale on the brand that you're looking at in particular. That'll kind of give you a little bit more guidance as to which one you should go for. But basically, if you went with the 158, I would say with your height and weight, it just might feel a little bit flimsy. So if you're looking for something that's really pressable and going to be nice and playful and buttery, then maybe you do want to go with the 158. But if you're looking for something a little more versatile that you want some stability out, of, you want to be able to carve at higher speeds, the 162 is probably going to be the way that you want to go. So uh, it's going to, it definitely is going to depend on the particular snowboard, but I hope that helps you out, man. What's up in motion SLB? See you guys. Cheryl, Benny. Hi from Missouri. What's up guys? Uh, I think I saw a couple of super chats come through here, so I'm going to hop over and uh, filter those out real quick. We got a uh, $5 super chat from Bad Riders. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Hey TJ, thanks for the tips with the War Pig. I've picked one up, or I've picked up one of the new ones, and I'm interested on in what you think on using stiffer bindings on it. So I'm actually running the Union Atlas on that snowboard, which is a pretty aggressive binding, definitely a good bit stiffer and more responsive than the Contact, a little bit stiffer than the Force, which I'm using as my main binding this year. I haven't tried the Falcor from Union, which is gonna be the stiffest binding they offer this year. It's Travis Rice's new binding, but I think that if you pair stiffer bindings with the War Pig, you'll be totally fine, especially if you're using it as more of a true all-mountain snowboard, something that you're gonna be doing a lot of carving with, you're gonna be exploring with it, hitting powder, all that type of stuff. I think you'll appreciate the response and the support that you're going to get out of those stiffer bindings. Um, so I would say go for it, man. If that's what you're feeling and that's kind of what you want to use the board for, that's going to be on point for sure. I'm going to be doing a video on the contact versus the force versus the atlas to give you guys a bit more of a binding comparison there on the union line. Uh, probably mid-February. Going to be gone in Europe and then heading to Whistler for a few days and won't be back in Colorado until February 15th. Have a short window in there to, to do some filming here in Colorado. So that's one of the videos that I'd like to get done. Also hoping to ride some more with Ryan Napton and Jonathan Buckhouse out here. So yeah, hope that helps you out, man. Got another $5 super chat from Mike Wysek or Wiasek. Thank you, man. Appreciate the support. I'm new and I've demoed a process flying V159 and I love it. The custom was too hard for me to handle. I'm a bigger guy, 230 pounds. Would you suggest opting for a 162? Honestly, man, if you demoed the 59 and you loved it, I wouldn't recommend going up to the 162. Uh, the 62 is going to be more stable. It's going to it's going to perform better at higher speeds, maybe once you progress a little bit and start to ride more aggressively. But it's also going to be harder to maneuver at slower speeds. So it's definitely going to make the as you're starting out that progression a little bit more difficult. Uh, just for some perspective, Kevin is about 6'3", and he weighs like 185, I think, and he's on a 58. I think his huck knife is a 58. So you got a little bit of weight on him, but I think, you know, like I said before, that's just going to make the board a little bit more playful. But I think that if you like the 159, I would stick with it there. I don't think there's any uh, huge reason to go up to the 62. I feel like you're probably even still within the weight range there on the 59. Although a lot of times, once you get over 200 pounds, they don't necessarily get that into specific into the weight range. But yeah, I think you'll be good on the 159, man. 
Sam Townsend with a $2 super chat. Thank you, man. And Sam is looking for some really flexible park board recommendations. Sure, I'd be happy to throw some out at you. So as far as like really, really flexy goes, like super soft, you got the lobster jib board. That's probably one of the softest boards that I've ever ridden. The Battalion Disaster is also going to be a lot of fun, nice and flexy. I'd rate it right around a 3 out of 10. The Capita Horror Scope, super flexy snowboard, and all these are going to be park boards. Um, going a little bit stiffer, but still on the softer side of medium. You could also check out the Never Summer Fun Slinger. I like that one a lot, and that rocker dominant profile is going to help with those presses and butters and things like that, if that's what you're looking for with the soft, flexy snowboard. Also, the GNU Headspace which was my personal snowboard last season. I still own it and it's one of my favorites. It's one of the only camber dominant asymmetrical snowboards with magnet traction. I think it is the only one with that combo and it's on the softer side of medium as well. So it's still very pressable and a lot of fun in the park, even though it's a little bit more versatile, kind of more on the same level as the fun slinger. So check all those out. Hope that helps you out, Sam. All those boards are super fun. The softest out of those is going to be the horror scope and the lobster jib Board if you're looking for that really super soft style snowboard. Omar Hashwi with the $5 super chat. Omar, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Helping us out here, keeping the channel going strong. Hey, TJ, what do you think of the process flying V versus the GNU carbon credit for great edge hold for a beginner? I would say that the flying the process flying v is the better snowboard or it's at least a little bit more versatile you're going to have a little bit more stability a little bit more performance out of the uh, process flying v the carbon credit i would still classify sorry guys <laughs> it's cold out here my eyes are watering it's actually uh i think it's still below freezing it was really cold out at breckenridge today but Gonna keep this going strong. I got some nice layers on, feeling good out here. Got my Arcteryx mid layer. Got a link down in the description if you wanna check out what my favorite mid layer is. I'm actually wearing a lot of that stuff right now. Um, but yeah, I still view the Carbon Credit as primarily an entry level snowboard. It does have a lot of great tech in it. You're gonna get that ASIM side cut. You're gonna get magnet traction. That's gonna give it a lot more versatility, but overall, it's still a pretty soft flexing snowboard. It's pretty loose on the snow as well. Definitely geared more towards the rider who's just starting just learning and it's going to be a board that i would say you're going to progress out of fairly quickly to, you know depending on your progression the process flying v is going to be a little bit more stable a little going to be able to stand up to your progression a little bit better and it's yeah it's not it's not going to be as loose and playful as the carbon credit i would say it's more of a of a do-it-all style snowboard versus just like an entry level Thanks for the question, Omar. All right, we got a $10 super chat. Awesome, thank you, A1 Vera, appreciate it. And the question they are asking is, looking for a shorter board, I've been looking at the Women's Never Summer Prototype 2. I'm 5'2 and normally ride a 147. Thoughts on a 142 or 45. Also, thoughts on the GNU rear entry bindings. Hello from Michigan. Awesome, so stoked that you're joining us from out in Michigan. Thank you for the super chat and for your awesome question. Uh, I definitely would say that uh, you. I think you could go down to the 45, no problem. That's just gonna be a little bit more buttery, more playful for you. Um, the Prototype 2 isn't that soft of a snowboard, so it still should perform pretty well even if you size down. But if you're looking to go shorter, you might wanna check out some of those volume shifted boards. So something like depending on what you want to use it for. The Prototype 2 is a really solid do everything kind of board, but if you're looking for something maybe a little bit more specific, more geared towards carving, towards powder and stuff like that, you could check out the Party Platter. You could ch even check out the Ride War Pig in the smallest, I think they make it in a 48 is the smallest this year, or no, they make it in a 42. That's the smallest this year. I think they might be making an even smaller size next year. So I would highly recommend the War Pig 142. I think that would serve you really well. A short party platter, maybe even something like the K2 Wild Heart comes to mind. So that's the women's version of the 87, which is my powder board that I had mentioned earlier in the stream today. 
That board is actually what uh, it's following a trend in the industry right now. They're calling it a volume shifted snowboard. So basically you're able to ride a shorter length, but you still get great float and powder and great performance out of it because they made it naturally wider. So you still have a lot of surface area over the powder to give you that float. It's going to have a taper, uh, camber, all kinds of good stuff to help with carving and for powder. So depending on what you want to use the board for, I'd, I'd recommend checking out those guys and maybe some similar boards. Uh, but I I think though if you're riding a 47 going down to a 42 is going to be a pretty big jump if you're still within the weight range you could certainly go for it but it's going to feel like a completely different experience you're going to be able to really whip that board around you're going to be able to press it and maneuver it it's going to handle very differently from the same board as a 147 so that's my two cents on that I hope that that helps you out thank you for the super chat I'm going to switch back over to just the main chat here right now, see what we got going on over here. Hope you guys have been keeping the questions coming. Again, thank all you guys for being here. Uh, right now we're just in my backyard here in Silverthorne. I'm pretty stoked on the view this evening. It looks like it's going to be a nice sunset. Got a couple of rails back there. This right here is actually a drop in to hit those rails. Uh, as you can see, they are not maintained right now. They're just covered in a few inches of powder. So it's feeling like winter out in Colorado. Finally, it's feeling nice out here. I see we got about 230 people with us right now, which is awesome. Thank you guys all for being here. If you guys want to give the video a thumbs up, we're at 98 likes right now. If we could get that over 100, that'd be awesome. If we could get it up to 150 or 200 even by the end of the live stream, that would be really sick. So thank you guys again for being here. Uh, we're about 16 minutes in. In about 10 or 15 minutes, I'm going to take a break here and talk about Burton bindings just for a little while, and then we'll jump back into the questions. But in the meantime, I'm just going to keep answering your guys' questions and see what we got going on here in the chat. So, uh, Count J999, thoughts on Gilson snowboards? So, I did try a Gilson snowboard recently, the Gilson Duel. I tried out their soft edge technology. Um, it's pretty cool. They definitely make a, a decent quality snowboard it was a lot of fun uh, the dual I don't know if they do this across their whole line but the dual was a blunted snowboard so it, it had very short nose and tail outside the contact points so I was riding the 149 and it performed more like a 153 or a 154 uh, as far as the soft edge goes which is probably more what your question was geared towards I thought it was pretty cool uh, personally I like battalions triple base technology a little bit better I found that with the soft edge you're either really loose like it was very loose flat base which was cool buttering was nice and easy or you were super super locked in if you were carving you were hard on the edge if you were flat base you were really really loose and there wasn't really any middle ground there but it was still fun it's the type of technology that takes some getting used to and it's going to make it a, a little bit weird i think if you got fully used to it I would say even after a whole day of riding, I was pretty pretty used to it, but there were certain things that were still kind of tripping me up with it. That, uh, But yeah, if you really got fully used to it, it might be kind of weird switching back to a regular snowboard, but it seemed pretty cool. We'll have a video coming out on the channel pretty soon on that, so stay tuned for that. Definitely glad I got to try it. I've been wondering about the Gilson Soft Edge for a while, so thanks for that question, man. Lucas Vomel, would you come to Eldora? I don't have a pass to Eldora, man, uh, but I would love to come check that out. I know that's pretty close to Denver. I've never been there. Maybe I can, maybe sometime this season I can make my way out there, but I think, you know, since Kevin has the epic pass when he makes his way out to Colorado, we're probably going to be st sticking more to the Vail Resorts, but I would love to get out to Copper and Eldora and those other mountains as well, Loveland, so we'll see what happens. I'll keep it in mind. We'll see if we can make it work, man. So we got a quick question here from Euro asking if I can show the view behind me. So let's just take a minute and yeah, I'll show you guys a little bit of the view behind me from the backyard. There's some power lines, so it's not a perfect view, but I mean, those two mountains right there, it's, it's pretty rad. I'm pretty stoked to be living here this year. Yeah, let's check it out. So there's a quick sneak peek of the view from the backyard. I hope that I didn't cut out. I am on my house Wi-Fi right now, so I'm actually like 
right next to my house trying to keep a strong signal for you guys one other thing uh, the yard park isn't really set up yet and we haven't got to use our drop-in. We built this awesome drop-in and haven't used it. That's why the, the there's only a couple of rails out there. They're not even really set up. This is the second real storm we've had and it's still not that much snow. So uh, as soon as I get back from Europe, gonna probably be setting up the yard park as well. And I'll show you guys the drop-in real quick. So once we get that going, that's going to be a lot of fun. Definitely going to do a video on the yard park once we get it set up. I just, I've been traveling so much with Kevin and been working on the videos and so many other things with the website and the content and everything that goes into it. I haven't really had the time to take a day and just build out the yard park, but I'm planning on doing that soon and I'm going to do a video for the channel on it. So stay tuned for that. It'll happen at some point this season, but we've got so many awesome plans, so many great things coming up that I just, I couldn't say when specifically I'm going to be able to do that but I do have plans on doing that. Bustar Rio, where is Kevin? Kevin is in Whistler uh, where he lives. I live here in Colorado so I do the Monday live streams, snowboard advice, more kind of oriented towards gear if you have any gear questions and then Kevin does the live streams every Friday from Whistler. So I think I saw a couple of more super chats come through here. Uh, we got a $5 super chat from uh, Muhammad Sharaka. Thank you, man. Appreciate the support. I was looking at the Burton Trick Pony snowboard, the 158 wide. Weight range is 150 to 200. 162 is 180 to 260. My weight is 240. There's a great deal with the 158 wide. Yeah, I would say... You know, you probably aren't gonna break the 158 if you do go for it, but that's definitely a situation where that board's gonna feel softer than it's supposed to. So the Trick Pony, I actually tried it recently with Kevin in the recent Burton Step On Part 2 video. If you guys check that out, that's up on the channel. And it's actually a fairly soft snowboard to begin with. So honestly, man, if you go with the 158 wide, it's probably going to be pretty flimsy feeling for you. It's going to be super buttery, super pressable. It's not going to have as much pop as it's supposed to. It's not going to support you really how it should in turns and in the park and stuff like that. So I would probably go for the 162 if you could swing it, but that's kind of what you can expect if you do go with the 158. So I hope that helps you out, man. Brad Wells with a $5 super chat. Thank you, Brad. Appreciate it, man. Brad asks, any boards that would be good for keeping up with a skier in choppy conditions and agile on a powder day in the trees? So great question, man. This is a, I'm actually really glad that you asked this so I can kind of get into talking about some snowboard tech that's going to help with those things, kind of generalize it for you. I'll throw out a couple of boards as well. But basically, I would say if you're looking for a board that's going to be able to keep up with skiers through choppy conditions, you're going to be looking for a snowboard that has some dampness to it. And as far as floating in powder, you're going to want something with a taper and a setback stance. So. Uh, taper basically just means the tail is a little bit skinnier than the nose and a setback stance means that the holes where the bindings go in are pushed closer to the tail than they are on the nose and this is kind of a lot of jargon guys but hopefully this uh, this makes sense to you with the setback stance we're talking between the contact points so the contact points are the widest port the widest point on the snowboard on the nose and tail if they're centered within those two points, that's gonna be a twin style snowboard. It's gonna ride exactly the same in both directions. If it's pushed back at all from those contact points, then that's gonna be a directional snowboard and it's gonna have a little bit of a different feeling when you're riding switch. So those features in general are gonna help you on a powder day. And I would say for the most part, unless you get something really aggressive, having that longer nose is also gonna help with the dampening. So, I would say that the K287 comes to mind. I think that has a bit of a directional flex, so the softer, longer nose is gonna help make that board more damp and it's gonna help go over that chop as you're following your skier friends. Also, it has all the tech I was talking about, so it's gonna be nice and nimble through the trees. It's gonna float on top of the powder. The Burton Deep Thinker comes to mind. That board was a ton of fun. Hope you guys saw the video on that. 
and the as a twinish option for you the arbor brian aguchi pro model in camber it's uh just has a little bit of a longer nose outside the contact points to help float in powder other than that it's basically a true twin i think it has a slight taper as well but i one of the big things that stood out to me on that snowboard is that it was really damp so if that's what you're looking for maybe check that one out but it's not going to float as well as something like the k287 or the deep thinker so i would say look for something that is a more mid flexing but that style of snowboard if you get something real aggressive like the jones flagship which is an awesome board it's not going to be it's not going to have those dampening qualities that you're looking for that softer longer nose is going to help make the board more damp Thanks for the question, Brad. That was that was a fun one to answer. I hope that helps you out. We got a bunch of super chats coming through, guys. So I'm just gonna keep keep rolling with these super chats. Thank you guys so much for the donations. Really, really appreciate it. Tony Winch with a five. Uh, I think that's pounds, or I think it's pounds. I'm not sure what that is, but. Thank you for the super chat, Tony. Hey TJ, I have three Burton boards and Malavita ESTs, but I'm thinking of swapping to Union Ultras. Will I suffer going uh, to mini disc from EST? So, if with since you do have three Burton boards, I would say that's kind of the one scenario when you have a channel board that the Burton EST system is going to be the best. And I'm actually going to touch on this a little bit uh, at the 30 minute mark. So, stay tuned for that. I'll actually dive into great detail as to what you might be missing out on going from the ESTs to the unions why the ESTs are good for the channel system and why Burton's reflex system isn't necessarily the best for non-Burton snowboard. So Burton's reflex system is the base plate that allows you to use their bindings on standard insert pack boards and it actually has some limitations so I want to make sure that you guys are aware of that. But for channel boards, the EST is pretty much the ultimate. You're not going to be missing out on much switching to the unions, but I will basically, you're not going to get the micro adjustability on the angles. Just to quickly answer your question, you're going to have to adjust in three degree increments. Other than that, everything else is pretty much just the same. You're not missing out on anything else. And I think the mini disc tech from Union is awesome. So that'll be, that could be good. All right. Kaiser, what's up Kaiser? So we met Kaiser out in Mammoth. He actually happens to have the same boot size as both Kevin and I, uh, and he was on the Burton Step-On. So he let us try out the Burton Step-Ons at Mammoth. Thank you so much for that, man. That was an awesome day. I had a lot of fun riding with you. It's great to meet you. And yeah, hopefully we'll be shredding again soon, man. And Kaiser asks, uh, looks like Super Chat's not available when I'm in Dubai. That's all right, man, but this came through, so seems to be working quick question can you get a review out in the marhar lumberjack i can try man i talked to the marhar guys at sia last year which is about to be going down in colorado again in just a few days at the end of the week and i think i should be able to get my hands on that snowboard marhar is a bit more of a niche brand and i don't think they're based here in colorado but I'll try. For you, Kaiser, I'm going to try to get my hands on that board. I've been wanting to try some Marhars anyway. I know, uh, I forget what their tech is, but they have something unique going on with their boards as well. Something with the uh, beveled edge on the base, I think, if I recall correctly. Uh, or no, it's a sideways rocker they have on their board. So yeah, hopefully I can try that out. Definitely. Thanks for the suggestion, Kaiser. And yeah, awesome to see you, man. Thanks for being on the live stream and thank you for the super chat. Grindiga, another regular here on the live streams. Thanks for being here, man. Hope to see you on Patreon here in a few. Grindiga asks, or he says, have fun on the Euro trip. Looking forward to more collab content. Good luck finding Euro tacos. Hashtag taco fund. Thank you, man. One of the running things with the uh, super chats here on the live streams is the taco fund. So yeah, if you guys do give me some hashtag taco funds on the super chats, I will make sure that I go out and get some tacos tonight. And yeah, I'll yeah, greatly appreciate some free tacos. Uh, Kevin and I are always eating a ton of burritos and tacos. And as, if you guys have been keeping up with the vlogs, there was this place called Laughing Planet and we had a burrito there like every day. So thanks, Grindiga, appreciate it, man. Glad you could make it on the super chat here today. 
All right, guys, it's getting pretty cold. We're doing good, though. I got my phone hooked up to a uh, power bank, so I don't think there's going to be any trouble with the phone dying. But My hands are getting a little chilly, but that's okay. I'll be all right. We just hit the 30-minute mark, or we're about to hit the 30-minute mark, so I'm going to hold off on answering questions for now. If you guys want to keep dropping those questions, I'm going to scroll back up to the top and continue to answer questions here in just a few minutes. But I did want to take a moment today and talk about Burton bindings and just a few thoughts, some things to maybe be aware of with Burton bindings that you may not have known about. I actually uh, learned a lot about Burton bindings recently. They they do some pretty cool things. So uh, I'm going to start by talking about their EST bindings. So if you guys don't know what that is, Burton's EST system is basically a binding where the screws go, there's just two screws and one on each side of the binding, on the outside of the binding. So instead of four screws, you just have the two and they go in the channel system on the Burton snowboards. And basically with the EST, you get full micro adjustability in every direction. So if you pair an EST binding with a Burton board, it's pretty sick. It's probably the best combination for Burton snowboards in particular or boards with the channel system. And so what I mean by micro adjustability in every direction is that you can get exactly the angle you want. You can go one degree at a time. It just slides smoothly. So you can get any angle that you want. You can slide it forward. You can slide it backwards. You can slide it side to side. You can completely customize the stance on those bindings. So that's one of the huge benefits of EST and why I would recommend it for, uh, if you're if you're leaning towards Burton products, you know it's probably not the worst idea to pair that with the channel system. Another really cool feature on the Burton bindings that I just learned about this year, so I, I assume most people probably don't know about this, but it's actually really cool, and it definitely makes sense on the EST. And we'll talk about why uh, this kind of causes some sacrificing on the reflex side, but basically. If you look at one of their EST bindings, if you look at the bottom of the binding, so underneath it, the whole middle of the binding is all foam. There's no plastic. So what that's going to do is give you really, really good underfoot feel. And it's also going to allow the binding to flex with the snowboard. So that's probably the hardest part to imagine. But just say this is your snowboard uh, standing up straight. This is your snowboard in a carve, carving, say, this way, right? So as the board bends like this, having that binding actually, or having that system allows the binding to flex with the snowboard. So you get a bit of a more natural flex out of the board, which is kind of what that Union Mini Disc is aimed to do. So aiming to solve that problem, not creating dead zones on the snowboard, and it also gives you really good underfoot feel so that's kind of the quick lowdown on the EST system or at least what I wanted to talk about on it uh, that is probably my favorite feature that Burton incorporates in their bindings they also have a ton of other great tech but a lot of that other stuff transfers over to other brands that's probably the most unique thing that they're doing outside of the actual EST system now the reflex basically they created a base plate that can bend that can bend a little bit so you can still get that flex as the board bends with the reflex bindings and you can mount it onto any traditional insert pack so that's the, their solution for using their bindings on a traditional insert pack snowboard but in order to accommodate that so you get that good underfoot feel and you get that flex with the binding for the the natural flexing snowboard you sacrifice some adjustability so that's the biggest thing the way that the base plates are set up the way the holes are drilled into it you can only adjust the binding forward and back so that's going to make sure that you can center your boot over the snowboard which is huge making sure you're not getting any heel or toe drag but you're not able to adjust it side to side. If you wanna do a width adjustment on your stance, you have to take it out and go to the next insert pack over. So there's no micro adjustability left and right. You're probably gonna be widening, widening your stance by almost an entire inch and a half when you're, doing, uh, when you're using the reflex binding. So that's really what I wanted to say about Burton bindings today, guys. Uh, they, have, they have a lot of really cool tech in them. They're good bindings, but on the reflex side, which is the binding that you have to get from Burton if you're going to use it on pretty much any non-Burton snowboard, 
you're sacrificing your stance adjustability. So that's why I will never use Burton bindings except for on Burton snowboards. Uh, but for the most part, I just love my unions. I want to be sticking to my unions. And you can use unions on the channel system. So yeah, like I mentioned earlier, someone kind of asked this on a super chat. Basically, when you put a union binding on a channel system snowboard, you, you still get that adjustability side to side because it just slides in the channel. Uh, you, the base plate is compatible with it, even the mini disc and the full size, so you don't have to worry about not being compatible. But the, really the only sacrifice is that you have to adjust the binding in three degree increments versus on the EST, like I said, you can kind of go any angle that you want. So there's really no reason as you know there's no reason not to pair a union binding with a Burton board unless you just would prefer to have that EST adjustability but that's my two cents on that thank you guys for listening to that whole spiel I hope that some of you guys got some value out of that like I said I had no idea that they did that whole foam footbed until recently so hope you guys hope you guys like that I'm gonna take just a minute here Maybe take a take a look at the yard again real quick. Then we'll get back to some questions here for you guys. I think I'm gonna switch up my location. Awesome. Cool guys, yeah. We'll hang out over here now. So I'm gonna scroll back up to the top, gonna start just answering as many questions as I can again. I've seen a bunch of questions come through here as I was talking about those Burton bindings, so I know after a certain number of comments, they start to disappear from the top. But, uh, all right, I found Grindiga's super chat here. So, let's see. Josh Double, what's your fi top five favorite snowboard movies? Top five is tough. Um, I would say just my go-to classic snowboard movie is, I hope a lot of you have seen this. Hopefully, I'm not too old, but... Uh, out Cold, the movie classic with Zach Galifianakis, always a great time watching that movie. As far as actual snowboard films go, I'm really liking Depth Perception. I really enjoyed that movie. It's only like 15 minutes, but it was done really, really well. Has a really good story. That's probably my favorite recent one. And I don't know, the, I couldn't pick a top classic actual like snowboard, uh, like team snowboard movie off the top of my head man I'd have to I'd have to think about it for a minute but thanks for the question and guys we're at 185 likes if I could get you to give me a thumbs up and we get that up over 200 I'd be super stoked We've got about 190 people with us right now thank you guys for hanging out with me this whole time if you guys are just joining uh, yeah talk I already talked about the Burton binding so on the playback you can watch that hanging out here in Silverthorne Colorado just in my backyard showing the view a little bit always enjoy doing the live streams outside so yeah just keep those questions coming let us know where you're from and if you want to continue to hang out after the live stream is over going to be hopping over to patreon patreon.com forward slash board archive a little bit more casual less people just continue the conversation over there and just yeah ask me whatever you want and yeah just get a conversation going Awesome. I saw a super chat come through here from Paul. Oh, $10 super chat. Awesome, Paul. Thank you, man. Uh, no question. Just a big thanks for the tips and just a small donation for your German beer in Europe. Awesome, Paul. Thank you so much, man. I actually, so on the way back from California, I stopped in Park City just for the morning, did a little bit of snowboarding there. I actually, that's one of the vlogs I'm going to be working on this evening to get up on my YouTube channel, trying to catch up before we leave for this Euro trip. Um, and I met Paul, had a great time riding with you. Park City was, it was kind of dead that day. So it was nice. We had the mountain all to ourselves. just kind of explored, grabbed some food afterwards and then continued on to Colorado. So it was, it was great meeting you, man. Hope you and the family are doing well. And yeah, keep an eye out for that Instagram post. I met a ton of awesome people 
uh, that follow the channel on these on these recent trips and I'm gonna be doing a post on Instagram tonight tagging a bunch of those photos and just giving you guys a big shout out so if you want to follow me there I'm at board archive Kevin's at snowboard pro camp and if you see yourself in any of the photos please tag yourself or, or drop a comment and I'll tag you it was awesome to meet all you guys and if you see any of us in public as we're as we're traveling around in the next month or so please make sure to holler at us say hi I'd love to meet you guys be happy to feature you in a vlog if you want to be in one of the videos so thanks Paul appreciate the super chat man it was rad hanging out with you all right Jacob Cadzo with the five dollar super chat no question I'll keep an eye out in the comments and see if you meant to put a question and I just missed it uh, or if you didn't get it on the super chat but thank you man appreciate that Jacob Nick Lenny with a five dollar super chat as well thank you for your support Nick and Nick asks can you do a video showing how to check your speed coming up to rails definitely man yeah that's a good idea I never really considered that uh, is on the rail tips I think I'm you know typically we're focusing on the technique on on the approach how to get onto the rail what you should be thinking about as you're on the rail how to do your balance and, and land and all that good stuff you know how you need to be doing your shoulders and all that good stuff but uh, definitely I think that's a great idea I don't know if we'll necessarily do a full video on that maybe we will I'll have to see what Kevin wants to do if we can uh, incorporate but uh, incorporate that on our travels but uh, definitely we'll be given some tips on that in the near future in the vlog so just stay tuned to the vlogs uh, we basically are constantly trying to give tips as we're snowboarding around wherever we may be just depending on the conditions and the day and what we're doing we kind of focus the tips towards that rather than trying to come up with this grand idea for a video and force it to work even if the conditions aren't meant for it so yeah thanks for the suggestion man that's a great video idea i appreciate it Emilian popov with the two euro super chat thank you man taco slash kombucha fund appreciate it man yeah, if you guys uh, saw any of the videos when I was in Whistler recently, Kevin and I were on a kombucha kick. Uh, yeah, we had kombucha like every day. That stuff is so good. Just settles your stomach, gives you energy. Give me the booch. All right. So switching back over to just the regular comments here. John Stadnick, how long did it take you to begin black runs? So if you guys don't know, I'm originally from North Carolina and there essentially are no black runs in North Carolina. So I would say, you know, doing, I was doing the, the black runs probably, I don't know, my second or third season. I started snowboarding when I was 10 and I was only going, you know, a handful of times a year, maybe like seven or eight times a year. And I was the kind of kid that basically I was, I didn't have friends to go ride with most of the time. So I would just go out and try to meet people while I was out there and I would just go for it. I was falling all the time. I was completely self-taught. And if I saw something that looked fun, I saw someone else do something rad, I would kind of follow them and try to copy what they were doing. So part of that was just going on bigger runs. Um, so I would say by the time I started going on actual black diamonds, uh, I was probably on my first snowboard trips, so 18, 19 years old. And by that point, I was I had the fundamentals down pretty solid. I got my first season pass when I was 18 and started riding a lot of park. And so I was pretty prepared for it, had a lot of time on my board before I got out to that more technical terrain. So that's how it went for me. But I would say just kind of go at your own pace and you know, ride a little bit outside your comfort zone without going so far out that there's a high chance you're gonna get hurt. And you'll be riding blacks in no time, man. And if you can get a group of friends uh, that are down to do that stuff as well, that's that's probably gonna be the biggest help. That's, that's what I would say has progressed my snowboarding the most, is having an awesome crew of people to shred with that are down to teach you or learn with you and just generally feed off of each other's energy. And that helps progression a ton. Thanks for the question, man. Jay Pleasant, how do I super chat on an iPhone? I'm not sure, I, I haven't figured that out. I don't know that you can. If any of you guys know, please help him out and leave an leave answer in the comments. I know on desktop, it's basically just right underneath the chat. 
So there should be a way. Hope you can figure it out, man, because I definitely appreciate the super chats. It helps out a ton, guys. All right, we got a question from Jet Simpson. Battalion Magic Carpet or Lobster Sender for Park slash All Mountain? Ooh, great question, man. So here's my two cents. I would say the sender is a little bit more kind of do everything focused. It's a little bit stiffer than the Magic Carpet and the 3BT isn't as aggressive. So, excuse me guys. The sender's not gonna float as well in powder as the Magic Carpet, but it's gonna have some more stability for you. It's gonna do better on jumps and it's gonna do better at higher speeds. Whereas the Magic Carpet, I still had a ton of fun in the park on it. I hope you guys saw that video. I think it's called 10 Butter Tricks on the Battalion Magic Carpet. Um, it's a lot more pressable, still really, really fun in the park. A little bit more jibby and buttery versus the sender, and it's gonna, it's gonna float better in powder as well, I would say, just because of that 3BT that it has. So, hope that helps you out. They're both super, super fun snowboards. We got Kevin on the live stream. What's up, man? Good to see you. Euro trip kicks off soon, so soon. Um, head, I'm actually heading up to Vancouver to rendezvous with Kevin tomorrow. Be up there tomorrow night, and then the Euro trip kicks off early Wednesday morning. I'm like, I'm oh man, I'm so happy just thinking about it. It's gonna be so much fun. Ah, oh, can't wait to hang out with all you guys and just yeah, be able to travel across Europe. It's gonna be great. All right, I saw a couple of super chats come through here. Uh, we have a chat from David Button with the five, I want to say that's five pounds. There's so many currency symbols, I get them confused. So David says, from Wales, UK, thanks for the vids and advice. My question is, do you dream of being able to pole plant like Ryan Napton? Oh man, so bad. Uh, yeah, if you guys uh, don't know what he's talking about, Ryan recently put out a video called Pole Plant the Movie. Hilarious. Def I actually haven't seen the full movie myself, but I saw his Instagram clip. If you want to check that out, I'm sure the whole movie is really funny as well. But basically, he's just going around Breck with two ski poles just pushing aggressively with ski poles. It's really funny. On his Instagram, he got this golden clip of him just aggressively pole planting on a snowboard and then right behind him a skier comes and he's doing the same thing like just as aggressive. It's super funny. Definitely recommend you guys check it out. Um, yeah, I'm glad you, you guys uh, know about Ryan Napton. Really rad guy. I was actually snowboarding with him this morning. He was helping me film the review for the Never Summer Instigator that I was trying out today. And he actually said that he was sore from doing that video just because the pole planting just uses some muscles that he doesn't normally use. So I thought that was pretty funny as well. Thanks for the question, David, and appreciate the super chat. Thank you for your support, man. All right. Jacob Cadzo with the $2 super chat. Hey, sorry. Uh, don't be sorry. Thoughts on the 2017-18 Burton Blunt? So I actually am not familiar with the Burton Blunt. Uh, that's Burton has a ton of boards out there and that is just not one that I've looked into. Um, I'm sorry, man. I will try to look into it and maybe get a better answer for you if you want to hit me up. If you want to leave your question on the most recent post on Instagram that's probably gonna be the easiest way for me to find it again and get you an answer but uh, unfortunately I, I don't know that board man but I, w I really want to answer your question since you, you gave me that super chat really appreciate it and um, I just don't know the specs off the top of my head or I'd be happy to talk about it I'm sorry man <clears throat> all right got a question from Buck Snabes, how do you 180 off a box? So if you're going 180 off of a box, it's actually pretty, it's probably the, the uh, easiest 180 to, to learn off of a rail feature. So it's all gonna be in the shoulders. Start with the 50-50. As you're approaching the end of the box, so you wanna do a front side 180. So say I'm going like this, I'm regular footed. As you, we're going this way. As you start to approach the end of the box, open up your shoulders so they're more square with the rail and then when you come off the rail having those shoulders open is going to allow your hips to kind of swing around and get that 180. Same thing for a backside just rotate your shoulders the other direction and that should bring that 180 around for you man. I'm gonna make sure I didn't miss any other super chats here. All right I think we're looking pretty good. 
yeah, I hope those tips help you out. I'm pretty sure there's some videos on the channel talking about that as well. If you want to check those out, there's a lot of trick tip tutorials on the channel already, especially for those more kind of beginner tricks. So 10 minute warning guys, we've been going for just about 50 minutes now. Sun's starting to go down, it's getting pretty chilly, but I think the phone's holding up solid. I hope this has been a good connection for you guys. Uh, just a reminder, you're gonna be hopping over to the Patreon. I'm probably gonna take a 10 minute break in between to go inside, warm up, maybe have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or something like that, and then gonna hop on patreon for another 30 minute live stream hope you guys can join me there patreon.com forward slash board archive so yeah 10 more minutes of answering questions uh keep the questions coming guys there's still a ton uh there's definitely way more than i could answer in a live stream so thank you guys so much for all the questions i'm just gonna continue to scroll through and just try to get to as many as i can thanks again for being here guys we're almost at 250 likes if we could get 15 more likes and and break that 250 mark that'd be awesome thank you guys All right, Dom2k17 asks, what do you think about Rossignol snowboards? So I haven't ridden a whole lot of Rossi boards. There's a review on the channel on the Rossignol jib saw, so I definitely encourage you to check that out. I've also ridden the One Mag and the, I believe it's, yeah, it's the Sushi. And they're, they're solid boards, really great construction. Any company, that's making snowboards that also make skis. You know, Rossignol made skis first. They are gonna have really solid bases, gonna be really fast base material and just high quality bases. So they're faster snowboards. They also lease Magna Traction from Mervin. So you're gonna get that additional contact points on the side cut, giving you a lot of grip on ice or hard snow where you might be slipping out. So definitely a solid company. Uh, I'm actually really good friends with the Rossignol rep here in Colorado. Uh, what's up, Nick? I know you're probably not gonna see this, but if any of you guys know Nick, super rad guy, and uh, hoping to get on some more Rossi boards. Gonna be doing a bunch of traveling over the next month or so with Kevin, so gonna have a lot of content coming out that may not necessarily be majority board reviews, but gonna try to get as many board reviews as I can. And then once I get back in Colorado, gonna really try to buckle down and just spend the rest of the season getting on as many boards as I can, but if a trip comes up, I'm going on it. I can't I can't say no to these trips. It's been too good. R. Lewis asks, hey TJ, should I stick to local hills for learning how to snowboard or should I actually head to a big mountain? I would say as far as getting those fundamentals down, definitely learn at the local hill. I would wait until you you get pretty comfortable, you're linking turns, you feel comfortable riding at speed before you actually invest in going on a vacation to a bigger mountain. Honestly, I know it's easy to take for granted, but even having a small hill like I had in North Carolina is a huge blessing. Not everyone has access to even small hills like that. So I would take full advantage of that, get your skills to a point where you feel pretty comfortable, and then go to a bigger mountain so that you can actually you know, take advantage of the terrain and you're not just at this world-class resort on the greens or on the bunny hill or something. But uh, I don't mean, you know, to take like five years learning, but you know, let's put some time in at the local hill and then, and then maybe go on a, a nice vacation. All right. Snow Squad tips on 360s. Uh, definitely know there's uh, some videos on the channel on that. So I hope you just search the channel, find the video that gives you the tips on that. I know you can get it down, man, 360s. Super fun trick. Uh, any way that you do it, there's actually eight ways that you can do a 360. So uh, maybe even more than that, but there's eight basic ways. Oh man, it's getting cold out here, guys. My fingers are starting to, to lose their mobility. I'm like, whew, it's been cold out here today, but no complaints, we need it. The mountains are actually snow capped behind me and it's looking good, so no complaints. Ah, here's a good question. Uh, Sasha Moisey, camber versus rocker on a powder day. I would say, personally, I would still, I would go, I think my new favorite for free riding and for, for powder, unless you're on a true powder board, is shifted camber. 
So that's basically camber from the front insert pack all the way back down to the tail and then rocker in the nose. So that's gonna, usually a board like that, you're gonna find a taper and a setback stance, which I talked about earlier. Hopefully you guys are, are keeping up on the same page with all this tech I'm throwing out. And all that combined, despite the camber, is still gonna give you a lot of float, but it's gonna give you more stability for drops, for uh, anything that you might be doing on that snowboard on a powder day where you would need more power. But generally speaking on like an actual true powder snowboard most of the time they're going to be rocker dominant or full rocker just because the natural shape of a rocker board is going to poke that nose up and help you stay floating. So on a, on a pure powder board I would say rocker but uh, honestly the biggest thing on a powder board is going to be having a, a really far setback stance and a really short tail. That's going to allow that tail to really drop in the powder and make sure you're staying on top. I saw someone ask, can you do some backflips, TJ? Backflips coming up, definitely. So I, the last, I would say two full years, so pretty much since I started doing the board reviews uh, with Kevin. I haven't been riding as aggressively in the park. I'm starting to feel a little more confident now. I definitely plan on throwing some backflips and some rodeos and getting upside down here on this trip to Europe, assuming that we, you know, we have some good jumps and conditions for that. But uh, I used to enjoy flipping all the time, backflips, rodeos. I never was crazy good at it, but it was something that I was interested in. But when I broke my ankle a couple years ago learning 720s, that just kind of put a big mental barrier for me. And I haven't, I haven't been the same on jumps since then. So one of my big goals this year is to build my confidence back up on jumps, start doing bigger spins, hitting bigger gaps, and also getting upside down. So that will be coming, man. And yeah, thanks for the question. All right, Jordan Bur... Burleson. So this is a question that's came up before. I'll answer it quickly. How did you and Kevin meet? We met through our mutual friend Garrett who also has some videos on the channel. He was with us at High Cascade last summer. I lived with Garrett in Whistler many years ago and he introduced me to Kevin. We filmed that summer, kept in touch, kept filming and just became great friends and now we're doing this. So that's kind of the, the very quick and short story of how we met. All right, Damien Lepsis asks, what's the most stylish park trick and rail trick? So this is obviously a very personal question, very opinionated question. So my opinion on this is for, for rail tricks, I think probably the most stylish is a front blunt or uh, it's like a front side board slide so you're going backwards down the rail but the rails under your back foot so I think that just looks really really cool if you have the technique down properly once you get comfortable with it you can actually throw in some grabs and really style it out but I think that one looks really really cool and as far as jumps go I think some delayed spins like delayed 360s look pretty cool but honestly just a super late back one on a big jump I think looks amazing also methods you can never go wrong with a method but a lot of that also a lot of uh, the uh, environment comes into play you know whether you're in the park on a natural feature what the gap looks like how high in the air you're gonna get all that type of stuff what rail feature you're hitting but those two are awesome <sighs> All right, guys, just a couple more minutes left. Gonna keep this going, try to answer just one or two more questions, and then I'm gonna head over to Patreon, and I'll be back next week. Next Monday, we'll be coming at you live. I'll be with Kevin, and we're gonna be in Europe. I, I'm not exactly sure where we're gonna be. I'd have to double check the schedule, but yeah. Actually, honestly, I'll probably, I'll see you guys on Friday. I hope you guys are able to come back on Friday, hop on the live stream. We can tell you about how the Europe trip has been progressing and I'm sure there'll be a bunch of new videos on the channel by then as well. All right. 
DB Snow, how do you feel about Never Summer boards? I was actually on a Never Summer board today. They're definitely a high quality product. They have really good construction. They finish their boards very well. Uh, the one thing that gets me about Never Summer is all their boards are rockered. They're all rocker dominant. They do either their traditional rocker camber, so it's rocker between the feet, camber underfoot, or their ripsaw, which doubles the camber, but they're all rocker. They're all gonna teeter-totter over the middle, and they're gonna just have a looser feel. They, and uh, So that's the one thing that bumps me out about Never Summer. I wish that they had some camber options. I know that they're pressing the Sims snowboards now in their factory, and Sims has some camber options, that sh and they share a lot of the same tech. But yeah, they're a quality brand. They're huge here in Colorado. Uh, people love them. I think they make great snowboards, but I I like camber, just straight up, guys. I've, I'm a fan of camber, and they don't offer that, so that's something that kind of gets to me. Reloaded, what's your opinion on the Never Summer Fun Slinger? We have a video review on the channel, so I encourage you to check that out. Also have a written review on the site for that, so lots of info on the Fun Slinger. Check that out, I think that's gonna be the best resource for you. And last question, I'm calling it, Gustavo Magana, best pair of goggles you have ever owned. Oakley Flight Deck, uh, if you guys don't know, Sport RX got their beanie on right now. They've been sending us a bunch of goggles. We've been able to try out all different brands, all different styles cylindrical, spherical, you know, Oakley's, Dragon, Smith, Spies, uh, Sandbox, Gyro, all these different brands. And while there are a ton of really high quality goggles out there, most of the newer goggles that you're going to find are going to be are going to perform very well but i think that the prism lens is on top it just it's just it really changes the way things look you know it adds saturation it really increases the contrast they have great foam on the back so i kind of i have a larger more prominent nose and it really just doesn't allow any air to get in the goggle very comfortable fit and the flight decks in particular are just really really big and offer very good peripheral vision so that's probably my favorite goggle. Shout out to Sport RX for hooking me up with some flight decks this season. Gonna be trying out some other goggles as well. I also really like Dragons. Uh, prior to these Oakleys, I was using the Dragon NFX and the X1 for years. So Dragon makes a lot of quality products as well, um, quality goggles. So hope that helps you out, man. I think you wouldn't go wrong with any Dragons or Oakleys. Uh, the one advantage you get with Dragon is you get two lenses and they both have Luma lens uh, versus with the Oakleys you usually just get one. So that's it for the live stream today, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I'm glad I was able to answer your questions. It's always a great time getting to hang out with you guys. I look forward to it every week. We'll be back again on Friday. And if you want to continue to hang out, hop over to Patreon. I'm going to do a 30 minute live stream there. Give me 10 or 15 minutes to warm up and get that set up. And yeah, patreon.com forward slash board archive. You can hit Kevin and I up on Instagram. Kevin's at snowboard pro camp. I'm at board archive. Also, please make sure to subscribe if you found this video helpful. Hit that notification bell. It'll let you know anytime a video goes up, anytime we go live, all that good stuff. Lots and lots and lots of great content coming, guys. We got content from the UK, from France, from Austria, from Switzerland, all these amazing places coming up soon. Gonna be joining up with Kevin doing collab content as well. So I hope you guys enjoy what we have going on in the next few weeks. It was great hanging out with you and I'll see you soon. Take care, guys.